So, making this video has been quite the challenge and um, a lot of technical, technical errors have happened and amongst that, I very stupidly deleted um, several minute, minutes of footage explaining my work on the river trail and introducing the river trail and the allotment site. So I'll do it now, um, a day later, while I'm at the Owl Sanctuary making another video. <laughs> Basically, what you're about to see is the river trail which I developed um, and delivered. Um, it's about a mile to a mile and a half. The first kilometer is reinforced with something called Eco Grid or DuraPath, which is essentially recycled plastic um, and it's been refilled with soil so that grass can grow through it, but it's reinforced so that um, it's disabled access. Um, along the river trail, uh, you'll find things like the hack pen, which I've um, collaborated with the Suffolk Owl Sanctuary. Um, there's a wildflower project I did and um, lots of different things. Along with the river trail, I developed um, a new allotment site where we took um, allotment holders off of their old site, which um, was very bad for growing food, but really good for a wildlife um, haven. So it's going to be redeveloped into that, which hasn't happened yet, but it will. And then we move, I moved all of them onto a brand new site at the museum. Anyhow, enjoy the video. Um, yeah. <laughs> thing that we did is we installed um, a toilet block here which um, is an eco toilet it's essentially um, it's essentially a glorified porta potty is what it is um, but here it is this is the toilet block um, it's actually pretty nice inside to be honest I'll flip my camera around and show you so we're not gonna do the walk on the river trail um, I'm here at uh, one of the most iconic um, sort of uh, pieces of our collection, really. Uh, one of our, this is, um, this is the wind pump, sorry, the water pump. <laughs> um, this was actually, um, water pumps were used to drain the land of water, um, especially in areas like this where um, it gets very, very wet over the winter time. Um, so super important, agriculturally speaking. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go do um, both loops of the river trail. I'll show you the new bridges, the new boardwalks that got put in, the sculpture trail that's been, um, well, almost fully put in. Um, but I've been doing all kinds of different things down here. Down on this bank, where you'll see it's quite bare, I've been uh, doing something called the uh, Turtle Dove Project with the RSPB, as I partnered with them, trying to um, promote uh, turtle doves to nest here and give them good nesting habitat. Um, like I mentioned, I've got the Suffolk Owl Sanctuary thing going on, which is very cool. Uh, we did a wildflower project down here, as well as um, all of the other works in getting this path um, um, for disabled access. Um, we did. We planted a load of trees. Uh, last year we planted 330 trees in one of the, uh, a couple of the meadows. Um, uh, and yeah, lots to see. So let's um, let's do it.
really neat things um, that I'm quite proud of that we did here is I um, built a wildlife hide with a fellow here who does traditional hurdle making. So he essentially makes fences like this, but uh, we put holes in them so that you can look through to the far bank. And on the bank over there is actually um, just, I don't know if you can see it, it's a little washed out, but there's some telephone poles you can kind of see. Uh, yeah, well, you can, you can see them there. Yeah, they're there. Um, just over there is a really big badger set. And if you're here at the right time of night, which you can be uh, once a month with me, <laughs> um, you can sit here and watch the badgers come out and come down the bank. Um, and it's really, really cool. The last badger night we had, we had a fox, we had several badgers. I think I counted three or four. Um, lots of different really cool bird sightings. Um, and of course, our Suffolk Punch horse, Zippo, one of them, we've got two Suffolk Punches, but Zippo is here in this field with the donkeys and he put on a lovely show for us as well. <laughs> Very entertaining. Um, so uh, yeah, this is, this is uh, the, I call it the hazel hide because it's made of the hazel. <laughs> Um, polished up the river trail just yet. There's some parts that are overgrown and stuff. I'm uh, just waiting till next week um, to do like a lot of landscaping on it. The, the path sort of just got finished uh, recently and um, there's some cleaning up that I gotta do on it kind of thing but this is the last Saturday I have to be able to do this video so I'm getting it done now. Um, the river trail has a cool history. Um, well, the, the, sorry, the Rattlesden River itself so the Rattles Den was actually used um, by the Danes who came to settle um, here in the UK. Um, they would travel in from uh, the Orwell River, from uh, they come in from the east, from the sea, uh, near Ipswich. And they came up here, and actually there is evidence of them settling um, on the land just, just beyond the museum grounds. Um, you'll notice the land kind of undulates a little bit. Well, you might. Um, you definitely notice when you're walking it here. That's because this used to be used for um, hop growing um, and um, willow. So this was a really big, big, there's a lot of industry here for both those uh, products. Um, hops are used obviously for, for brewing and um, the willow, there was a big um, sort of like basket, like a weaving factory here in Stowe Market back in the day. Um, so this is where a lot of that came from. The um, meadows were used for um, hay production as well, and that's what we use it now for as well, as well as our grazing animals. So as we go down, we'll see um, the cows. There's some, well, we should. They're around somewhere, the, the cattle. Um, and yeah, but we'll make our way past a few more sculptures and um, as we do that, we'll um, keep going. We'll get off of the uh, the River for All loop, which is this reinforced one, and we'll get into a little bit more um, rugged terrain. <laughs>
these um, these sort of um, viewing points. I installed these uh, last summer because, as you can see, the nettles grow quite quite tall um, along the riverside, and it's just it's it's just too hard to cut them all down, kind of thing. As well as you don't really want to. Um, so we put in these sort of viewpoint stations um, that we maintain those for sure so that people can get a really good look at the actual river and also that they can look across um, at the other meadows that we have on the other side. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, basically, um, this trail, um, I, I established this trail. There was a little bit, there was sort of like a semi-accessible trail that ran a little bit along here um, before I arrive, but um, not to the extent of what it is now and, and at, at all. <laughs> um, and there was a lot of places that were totally inaccessible where we're going to go to next. But I mean, even things like this bench that I'm sitting on um, wasn't down here. I, I installed the benches and seating areas. Um, and um, I, uh, cr I, I built a new gate over that way that we'll walk through at the end um, to actually create the loop because before you kind of, on the sort of semi trail, you could only walk like one way and then come back on it. So um, yeah, all of these sort of footpaths and things are stuff that, um, that I established, which is really cool. So um, yeah, we're, um, we just, went down we we're sort of halfway through the first loop we're gonna do kind of like a, a a figure eight almost kind of thing um and we'll keep heading that way um it's just really really nice to have this kind of a green space in the center of a town um where accessi accessibility to nature is really few and far between and especially if you don't have a car you can't get to it normally but here like i mentioned at the start of the video we're on the high street and we're a five minute walk to a train station um i mean you could you could go from london to here in like an hour and 20 minutes easy um you know so so it's really quite special to be able to have this down here as well as to be able to tell people the history about it and share um with them sort of just just how 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 special it is um here in the uk yeah Um, one of the things that I'm doing is I'm working with the Suffolk Wildlife Trust and we've installed um, that down there. It's um, basically a raft with a small, um, a small top on it and there's a cage inside. And um, that is a mink trap. So it's baited with um, a little sort of, you know those uh, little plastic golf balls, the, the hollow ones with the holes in it? Um, we've put inside um, scent. Um, essentially urine <laughs> um, of mink, American mink, um, to see because on the Gipping River, which is not far from here, um, they do have a mink problem and American mink are very invasive and very bad. Um, they, they do a lot of really bad to the environment uh, here. So, so far so good. Haven't had any in the trap, but what's cool about that is that it's a smart trap. So um, there's a magnet attached to um, a little electronic device, and when the when the trap closes, the the magnet pulls off, and a signal gets sent out, and I actually get a text message to my phone to let me know if something is in. Because if I trap something like an otter instead, which we've got otter, water vole, um, all kinds of different protected species down here, I need to know because I if I kill something that I shouldn't, if I leave it in there and it starves, then that's really bad. Also though, I do need to know if mink are trapped because it's by law, you have to dispatch mink. Um, you can't release them uh, and you don't really want it getting out again. So uh, yeah, it could be like a weekend or whatever and I could not be here, but I can get a text message on my phone saying that there is something in there. I mean, more often than not, it's probably like a moorhen or something, but um, 
anyhow, yeah, that is, um, that's a really cool thing that I'm doing as well. <laughs> So where we're headed right now is into the woods. Um, this is the ancient woodland down here on site. Um, it was previously inaccessible because two ash trees had fallen over and broken the bridge out that um, you could gain access through. So um, what I've done is I've got this brand new bridge installed and carrying on from there is a brand new boardwalk because this is super, super boggy. It's a very wet woodland. Um, and so the boardwalk runs um, through the first portion that would otherwise be just absolute mud. Um, so it's created um, brand new access for, uh, for folks to walk through and get to see um, just how amazing and how old this woodland is. We've got some big, big trees in here. Um, and it's been really, really nice. Um, I also cleared out a little space in there and put some um, stumps down. So there's a bit of a seating area. Um, <clears throat> and then we're going to uh, end up at the hack pen, um, the small aviary where I've got the two tawny owl chicks. with um, my two little tawny owl friends. I've got their mice for them in this cup. We've been scattering them on the ground for them. Um, in fact, I'll do it now, just so that they know. I don't want to um, disturb them too much here because they are wild birds after all. They'll be released very soon, probably next week. Um, the way this works is that there's gaps between the walls here. Um, that actually allow for um, actual rodents to come in and so then they can practice their hunting which is really good um, and it's semi-open so the top is is um, open to the elements but they have that little bit there that they can stay out of the rain if need be um, but what happens is that this here this panel will go down and turn into a platform when they're ready for release and um yeah they're not very happy <laughs> that i'm in here with them but um once they're ready for release um we'll put that down make a platform then they can come and go as they please i'll keep feeding them um and hopefully from from there then they just sort of move on um we actually are probably going to be getting one more owlet in um after i release these guys next week and um yeah it's a really cool program that uh, that we're doing with the, the Suffolk Owl Sanctuary. Right, so I'm in um, the furthest meadow down on the river trail just after the woods 
Um, we do have the cow, the cattle in here somewhere. There's um, three ladies and um, a little calf. Um, I would really like to see them and lay eyes on them. So we're gonna go for a little bit of a walk in the meadow. This meadow is closed off to the public, um, especially with the cattle in it. Um, so we'll have a good look, a good look around and see if we can spot them. They're probably in the shade somewhere, to be honest. I mean, that's where I would be if I were a cow. I've spotted them. They're in this little um, grouping of trees here by their water. Um, they're quite friendly cows, at least they should be. But yeah, here we are. Hello, ladies. These are red pole cattle. They're just getting out of, uh, out of the sun here. Um, you can see the little, the little bull maybe over there. I won't uh, disturb them too much because it looks like they were enjoying their, their peace in the shade. Um, but yeah, just three cows grazing in, in the field. Um, lots of really nice tree coverage for them as you can see. And it's quite, uh, it's quite a wild meadow so it's a really nice, um, nice habitat for them. So we're ending um, the last bit of the, the, the walk of the river trail. We've got Zippo here grazing this meadow. Um, and you can see the other side of my, uh, my wildlife hide that I built. As well as you got this nice shot of the, uh, the water pump. Um, you'll, um, this horse paddock actually, this whole thing um, I built. Um, you'll notice that there's a white wire there because somebody decided that he wanted to lean on the stock fencing wire a lot to graze the grass on this side of the fence. Um, and in order to stop him to do that, I put some uh, electric uh, fencing on the inside. Um, it worked anyways. <laughs> We've also got the two donkeys um, down the way here who are putting on a bit of a show. Um, and my colleague Michael, who, if you can see him in the distance, is carrying a very large ladder. <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah. So that kind of concludes um, the river walk. We'll go up and uh, see our other Suffolk Punch horse, um, Faith. And then I think it's time for a beer. Before we go, actually, we'll look um, over here at Faith. She's in the main horse paddock field. So that's this here. And there's Faith in the distance. Trust me, she is much larger than what she looks like right now. Um, she probably won't come over to me. Maybe she will. No. <laughs> <laughs>
absolutely no interest. Um, so she's a breeding mare. Um, we do hope to get some foals from her um, at some point in time. It is our intent. Um, now over down yonder that way, you can see some of the fencing coming out that way. That's because that's um, I built that. Um, I created a buffer zone for the badger set that's sort of encroaching into um, this main horse paddock. Um, so it's protecting the badgers as well as it's protecting our very, very large horses. Um, Suffolk punches can weigh um, like 2,000 pounds. Um, absolute monsters. Um, we also have our polytunnel here that currently doesn't have anything on it because uh, in a really bad storm it got blown over. Oh, see, she's, she she um, heard the sound of the quad and they associate that with food, so she had sort of started to make her way over to um, her stable over there. But anyways, um, yeah, now we'll venture up and out of the museum um, and we'll hit Snow Market and we'll go check out the pallet bar um, where the guys who own Medici Architects and Fox Art Studio, where I had Kickstarters at. Um, they also opened a bar, a pub, called Pallet, um, Pallet Bar, um, and they sell all local um, ciders and beers and gins uh, and things like that. Um, so yeah, we'll go have a look. Before I forget, actually, this here is the Bee Garden here. Like I said, we support a lot of um, community groups in town. Uh, one of our main ones is called Avenues East, which is an organization um, that provides activity for um, adults with learning disabilities. Um, and they come in and they main th maintain this space. Um, so it's a bee garden because we've got lots of little flower beds and things. Um, and they've built little bug hotels and um, it attracts lots of pollinating species, which is really, really nice. Um, so it's a nice little area. Um, and in exchange for them using the space and maintaining it, um, they, uh, they get to have all kinds of different activities and access to the museum, which is fantastic. Um, back here, actually, we even have um, some polytunnels. We've got your herbs. Um, these are apple trees that need uh, to be planted somewhere else. And um, yeah, a little mini greenhouse, all kinds of different stuff. So um, it's really a really nice little community space um, <clears throat> right here um, at the museum. All right, so that sums up um, the tour of the museum, really. It's actually market day right now, so I'm gonna walk through the market and see if there's anything to eat. And then we'll pop to the pub. And then I'll go back to the museum and get my bike and ride home. It turns out that pallet bar is closed. <laughs> Um, and there's actually very few vendors at the market today, so I'm gonna go to a little cafe and get some food because I'm hungry and a coffee instead of a beer. Maybe I'll get a pint after. But I'm gonna go to a little place called Petite Pancakes, which is right there. And um, yeah, let's do it. few times before. Um, they're really, really good. So they do um, both sweet and savory pancake type thing. Now pancakes here in the UK are a lot different than what they are back home. Um, but the best thing that they do is a pulled pork pancake thing with, um, oh, well I'll just show you. It's really, really good. Um, the girl will be up here soon to take my order.
Right, so um, that was great. Really, really awesome lunch. Like, um, like you saw, it's like, like, I think we would call them crepes back home. They call them pancakes here. But anyways, turns out though, Palette Bar is, is gonna be open in like half an hour, <clears throat> 20 minutes. So I'm actually gonna go retrieve my bike um, from my office, ride it over um, to the Pallet Bar area. I'll kill a little bit of time beforehand, walk around a little bit probably. And then, um, yeah, I'll show you Pallet Bar and then I'll uh, ride home um, and get editing this. It is super hot out today, um, but I'm all fueled up now. So uh, ready to go, ready to get back on the horse. <laughs>